Well, we've got a very special session today. Uh, my name is Steve Gohl. I'm the Director of Strategic Partnerships for Scale Fusion for North America. Uh, many times I'm hosting a partner podcast. Uh, today I've got a very special guest with me. Uh, please introduce yourself, sir. Uh, hello, everybody. This is uh, Hari, Hari Shankar. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Scale Fusion. I run this company uh, along with Arnab Chakrabarti. It's been 10 years now, and uh, it's great to be on this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, this is a special opportunity that we're both in the same room at the same time, so we wanted to take advantage of it. Um, there's been, uh, I, I've had the privilege of, you know, visiting our new offices too, so there's, there's a ton of excitement with being in this new space, uh, a lot of energy, and, uh, and, and just, just from where we were at last year to this year even, Absolutely. I've been amazed to see the, the progression and how things are moving so rapidly. That's just, the office is tastefully done too. Yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful. So I, I'm hoping more people get to come and visit. Like Absolutely. we're open to having pe uh, oh, people and partners great, yes. uh, come and visit because it's a wonderful space and uh, great for collaboration. Yes. So we'd, we'd love to have more folks visit too. Absolutely. Um, but since we had the opportunity, and again, we've we got some time to spend together in the same room, yes. I wanted to take, take uh, a few minutes and just ask you some questions about the, kind of the backstory of Scale Fusion, mm -hmm. um, because not everybody knows how we started. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're coming up on 10 years now, yeah, right? Yeah, yes. So there's a lot to that, and I guess I would just let you kind of start from the beginning and, and take us through it a little bit. Very well. Uh, it'll get too long if I tell the entire story. <laughs> I'll try to keep it short. Um, so we started uh, Promobi. Promobi is the company, right? Mm -hmm. And Scale Fusion is the product. So we started Promobi as a services company, a company that uh, does outsource product development. So we had customers from uh, Europe, America, uh, like any other software yeah. company. But the heart was always uh, clear that we had to build products mm -hmm. for businesses. That was clear. Um, so we used the services as a means to the goal. The goal is to build product. So we used services business to get in the initial mm -hmm. funding that is necessary to build a product and sustain it for a period of time until we find the product market fit and the market starts to accept it. Uh, so from 2014 is when we uh, you know, actually started, January. Um, until 2017, we were doing services while the product got built in 2015 itself. And then it took about a year for the product market fit to arrive at. And then by 2017, it was making about a million dollars. And, okay. uh, and then we said, okay, this is it. This is good. This is a good start. Uh, we had a small team then, of course. Uh, and then we took the call that uh, we'll, we'll forego the services business and focus more on uh, the product. The product then was called as Mobilock. You might be aware. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because we started supporting only mobile devices at that point in time. Trying to take a mobile device and make it into a kiosk was the basic use case that we were trying to solve. Uh, but as time grew, we added other platforms, laptops like Mac, Windows. So Mobilock was very restrictive in that sense, the name. So we had to rebrand. So in 2019, we rebranded Mobilock to Scale Fusion. It was a big exercise in itself. And we also see saw a dip. People were worried. Have you been bought off? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody bought you. Oh, yeah. Thought you got bought out, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but but then it 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 happened smoothly. Uh, in a sense, in 2020, we could see the results coming out. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's been the journey in kind of in, in, in short words. If there is anything specific that you want me to add, I'll be happy to. Uh, well, one thing you, that you touched on, I think, is important, is that um, you, you talked about the market. Maybe, or people thinking that you got bought out, mm -hmm. or maybe uh, different investors kind of driving things differently, or whatever. Maybe you can talk a little bit to that philosophy on sure. on how you envision growing a company and and what that looks like. All right. So, uh, at the, in the beginning, when we were looking uh, to start, there was nobody funding such <laughs> ideas, right? Uh, and it was difficult in India to raise money at that time. This, I'm talking 2013-14. Uh, money was still available, but not for all ideas. Um, so we had to self-fund this. 
and then it became a habit. It's it's just <laughs> nicer that way. You know? yeah. So we continue to remain bootstrap. Not that we are averse to raising any outside money. There's a lot of interest that comes from outside, uh, even to get you know uh, bought off. Uh, but uh, we have steered away. That's not the goal. Uh, we'll grow slow, or rather, we have grown uh, uh, step by step. I would put it that way, rather than just saying slow. No, it's not slow. It's organic in that sense. So we prefer staying uh, bootstrapped because it gives us the freedom to explore and build on the other white spaces that we see in the market. So our product suite also grows. There are co uh, complementing products that we can add. All of these uh, pluses continue to remain when you're free, or rather that is the thesis that we believe in at this yeah. point in time. But again, like I said, there is um, we are not averse to raising money. It's just that for as long as we can stay bootstrapped, let's do it. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's a, I think it's a great strategy, and it's um, in my time here, I've seen the benefits of it. I've seen how how we're able to make smart decisions without yeah. outside influence yeah. so much. You run a tight ship, yeah. usually. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's been about ten years, right. start to you know, from the start to, till now. Have there been any kind of uh, memorable key milestones or things that you? can look back on and say, okay, we, at this point, we, we really stepped it up a notch or this, this was a, a turning point or, or even a challenge. I mean, it could be both sides of that, a, a big opportunity or a big challenge Absolutely. along the way. There's a lot of such stories, <laughs> but I'll, because you've asked, I'll, I'll pick a couple of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, when we built the product out in 2015, I mentioned, right? Um, it, was, it, was, it was still a very young product. There was barely any customers. But we had this one big deal from uh, you know a, a, a very large company from France, uh, wanting to buy this and uh, I mean, wanting to take the subscription, and we were just elated. That it was a very big deal for us at that time. Sitting in India, talking remotely, and then closing a seventy-five thousand dollar deal, uh, all within a span of uh, two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that project went so smoothly that we continued to work with them on other projects. So that gave a lot of confidence. Mm. You know, I have worked in five other product companies prior to starting my own. Uh, in each of those companies, some of them folded, but in each of those companies, I was one of the earlier employees. Uh, so I would go, uh, I would build a product out, but before it starts to make any money, I would exit. <laughs> but here, in, <laughs> in promo, we, we build a product, and then it actually started to make money. So it gave a lot of confidence. And yeah. that initial dollars and that acceptance in the market that, yeah, this is worthwhile and businesses will consider it, uh, was a big boost. Mm. It, it gave us the strength to, you know, go through the rigor. Uh, the other problem that I uh, had foreseen even before in my previous startup, this is my, by the way, my second startup. So I always had confidence in my team that we'll build some good tech, good products. But we did not have the uh, idea how to go about marketing it and, you know, doing selling. Uh, so you had a really, you knew you had a solid product yeah. for sure. Yeah. You had to figure out how to get that message out. Exactly. So we we built good products, but we didn't know how to sell it. Yeah. Right? Because uh, both me, my my co-founder, both were tech guys, right? Uh, so one of us had to morph uh, into trying to be the business guy. So uh, this was again early days. A lot of interesting mm -hmm. memories in the early days. Uh, I could have actually, you know, stitched a very, uh, you know, strong story saying that, oh, everything was planned, it went, you know, as expected, but that's not how it is usually, right? So, um, so in 2015, there was a lot of information that uh, I got and I met with a lot of uh, SaaS founders to understand how they are doing the business uh, and the internet, fantastic, a lot of, yeah. uh, you know, uh, blogs and videos of people, you know, giving a lot of advice as to how to go about doing this. Uh, slowly and steadily, uh, you, you start respecting that, oh, there are other teams needed other than just building product. Like you need a marketing team, you need a sales team, <laughs> you need a success team. So one after the other got built out. So these are very few initial memories that, uh, uh, you know, that got us going. And uh, I remember very clearly 2017, I think it was March, uh, we hit our first million in, uh, in, in sales in that. Uh, financially, year, the April to March of right. uh, April 2016 to March 2017. In that uh, year, we hit a million dollars. That was a sweet milestone. I said, uh, "Here we are. Yes, <laughs> this is this is uh, 
we, we'll, we'll make this big. And then it's time to scale from there, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I would like to believe that. Yeah. But there's still a lot more to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, kind of forward looking, looking ahead, yeah. since we've already looked at the past, I mean, what do you see anything upcoming on the roadmap or uh, where you see the market going in our space for the next two to three years? Uh, maybe from a global perspective, selfishly, if you, uh, I, I'm focused on North America, so if you want to focus there the, as well. But I, I'm sure you've got some thoughts on, you know, where Scale Fusion, where Promo is going in the next uh, three years. Absolutely. So, uh, <clears throat> so here is how I see it, right? Um, we are in the endpoint management space, and there's an explosion of uh, endpoints. You have today so many various devices to conduct business, some of them automated, some of them, uh, you know, human held. Mm -hmm. uh, even the reports that you read on the internet say that this business is going to increase because of the uh, various uh, endpoints that are coming into being. Mm -hmm. uh, so from that perspective, I see that uh, unless you are making huge mistakes which you're, where you're not reading the trends, the, it'll continue to grow. So in my opinion, it's a it's a nice place to be in. There are challenges, of course, probably we'll discuss it uh, soon. But uh, um, in general, because the endpoint explosion is continuing to happen, I think it's 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 fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So so thank you for your insights on what, kind of where we're going. And I agree, the market is is just set to continue to expand even more rapidly than it is now. We, we've seen it. Uh, Obviously, I think the, the pandemic and different things have really accelerated the growth in the mobility space beyond what anybody imagined, Absolutely. even the last three years. Absolutely. Uh, and it's just kind of set us into this, this motion of expansion on endpoints. Um, and I, I know you can't give away all of the secret, uh, secret sauce here or, the, or the, the roadmap, but what are some, maybe a couple of features, product features that you're excited about that are either recently released or kind of upcoming in the near future that that customers and partners might want to know about right i'd like to take uh, you know two specific features that i'm uh, very excited about uh, one is riding the ai trend uh, basically it's uh, you know you can do all your scripting you can just talk to it you can chat with it and then it will give you uh, you know uh, chat gpt will give you fantastic scripts out of that you can use it you can create a bank of it maybe eventually you know make it into a feature as well mm. so i think that is one that i am very excited about because of the possibilities i think we're barely scratching the surface of ai ai at this point in time um, i mean we'll have to talk especially about ai huh? i think yeah. it's one of the challenges that we'll have to also address smartly and the other one that we've launched or rather we're building out probably we are very close to the first launch and then uh, we plan to improve it is the one idp uh, more is to come. Okay. <laughs> it's an exciting space. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, I'm a partnership guy. Some people yes. know that, but it's, maybe I'm new to some people too. But, but really my passion is, is figuring out how we uh, go to market with partners, how, how you know, they become evangelists for our product, um, and how we go to the market together. So I guess one of my questions is, uh, and maybe this is a little bit looking back and looking forward mm -hmm. because we were talking about kind of the last 10 years. Yeah. Where have you seen, um, you know, partnerships fit into the growth mm -hmm. historically? Yeah. And, and where, how do you see that fitting in going forward too? Yeah, yeah. it's a great question. You know, uh, like I mentioned, when we started, it was all uh, inside sales. So basically we are trying to market the product and get signups to come in and then we work with uh, uh, the enablement of the customer. So we work primarily on that and we took the company up to 5 million on that and then we realized that for a scale uh, to come into the business, uh, one needs to work with channel. Now, like I said, um, both of us being tech, we're still learning the pieces. So around the 2019 time frame is when we started to work with uh, channels, we started to explore this. Uh, we made a share of mistakes, uh, fair enough, but then what has been great is that once you start working with partners, uh, it opens a lot of, uh, not just you know, customer wise, like you work with them together, but it gives you a lot of insight into the market. Uh, our product post uh, working with partners has improved 
you know, in a major way. Looks different than... Absolutely, yeah. because they are, they are on the ground looking at the, you know, white spaces around what we are operating. So we have started to see the business in a little different way. You know, and every two years this is happening. Mm -hmm. I'm sure yesterday or day before yesterday we were having this conversation how, you know, this entire thing is being stitched mm -hmm. out. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's it's something that is not just only to scale, but you know to provide value to the customer at the end of the day. You know, stitching all the various things together. Some of it by ourselves. Some of it with uh, you know other partners, other ISPs. Yeah, yeah. We've talked a lot about the uh, complexity too. So I think as as those endpoints scale, yeah, the quantity scale, but also the complexity of what uh, the the end user customer needs Absolutely. and desires as a solution. Uh, it, it gets more complicated, yes. and it's not that they can't do it them by themselves, but most of them don't want to. Yeah. They they are looking for a strategic partner to come in, take three or four pieces, and give them a absolutely. solution. And we're and we're just a part of that, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We're 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 a part of that. We'd like to be a big part as well. Yeah. <laughs> but then we're a part, and that's great. And that's the ecosystem we want to be in because, uh, like you mentioned. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, those strategic calls can be made when you are in touch with, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on the ground with the partners. Absolutely. So, talking about the partners and how we're aligning with them, yeah, uh, yeah I've been around long enough to know some partnerships are really, really good yeah. and some tend to go sideways and I'm sure you've had some experience in that Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. So, w what's your philosophy on and how we partner, who we partner with, uh, what does that look like? So it's been a learning experience, like you say, right? Uh, some of them have worked wonderfully, some of them have gone sideways. What we have understood over the period is that uh, if, the, if the values, if the core values of the organization and the partner, if it matches, then that's wonderful. When I say core values, I mean that, you know, we look for uh, longevity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Long-term relationship. And uh, at the same time, we're very customer focused, customer centric. You know, a lot of our product got built from the insights that we got from customers. It's not just we had a laundry list of things that we needed to get built, yeah. but it's because we stayed agile, uh, always listening in the market, which now the partners are also able mm -hmm. to provide. That's how this product, uh, you know, uh, gets built over time. And I think that is very important. So any, uh, these days, when we are talking to partners, we try and understand. I think you would agree with me, is to see are these core values uh, matching with the partner. One, uh, it's, it's a long-term uh, vision. Both of us should share that, and also very customer-focused, customer-centric. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to to put it in words. Um, here is the deal, though. Uh, you know, if uh, for us to win, uh, the customer has to win, and for that, partners are necessary, right? Yeah. So if partners win. We win. <laughs> that, I love that. That's uh, that's simplified and right to the point and the perfection there. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, I, I guess I've got one, probably one more question for you. Sure. Um, and just because when you guys started out, yes. I can imagine you, you you talked about some of the milestones, and I know where we're at now. We're, we've become you know a very modern, advanced, partner centric company. We've got uh, a phenomenal marketing team to tell the story. Yes. You filled in the, the gaps for like the business processes that you talked about early on that were missing, things like that. Um, I'm just cur curious on like when you were getting to that point of like, should we scale this? Uh -huh. Should we be comfortable at a certain level uh -huh. uh, com to go compete with? A lot of big names, right? Absolutely. There's a lot of big competition already, and we get that today. On you know what makes us different than co competitors to, in the market today, even. Yes. But you had competition way back then, Absolutely. and and the same thing. Where everybody, there's always healthy competition. Right. So, what sets us apart? That's what we get asked all the time. I mean, that what sets Scale Fusion Pro Mobi apart? Apart. Yeah. Um, so again, there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, stories that I can actually share. But here is something that worked out well. Or, you know, looking back, this is how I would look at it. Uh, initially, when we got started, uh, the initial customers that we had primarily were small and medium businesses. Uh, the competition at that time was also pretty big. You know, some mm -hmm. of those big names yeah. existed even then. Uh, but 
they were issues, they were not treated probably as well as probably an enterprise at that time uh, by these bigger uh, players. Mm. So they actually ended up sharing that gripe with us, saying that, you know what, uh, we'd like to be heard. Mm -hmm. It's not like you shoot an email and then you wait for 48 hours not getting a response. Um, so these were, uh, you know, uh, complaints that we got. I think we fit at that point in time really well with the SMB and we for the next year, year and a half, two years, we focused on making that bit really, uh, you know, work really well. Uh, so they continue to remain our customers while we had our vision to uh, get it bigger and to, uh, you know, uh, to take it to that enterprise level. Uh, we slowly started to build that out. Now, what we are trying to bring as a change is that uh, whether the customer is a small business or an enterprise, I think if we are, as long as we are customer centric, mm. we are agile, we are able to hear to the problems and then stitch solutions rather than saying this is all, this is where it stops. No, no, we'll have to find another one. Um, as long as we do that, I think that has worked well. That's a constant thread Yeah. since we were small to now. Um, whether they're big customers or smaller customers, it doesn't matter. If there is a problem that needs solving and if it falls in the line, of course, otherwise it's like a customized piece of work. But if it falls in line, I think we're just agile. We quickly pick it up and... Uh, deliver. I think that's why there is enough longevity with the customers as well. And it sets us apart uh, from that perspective. Otherwise, I mean, it's, it's, there are about 150 other, uh, you know, yeah. UEMs in the market. Crowded space. Exactly. So it's, I'm not going to get into the feature war. Back in the days, there were some uh, spaces that we had, uh, um, uh, you know, u utilized it, but it, that gap is always getting smaller and shorter. Mm. Right. So, uh, in my opinion, some of the core values is what is going to set us apart at this point in time. And us being agile and not being, uh, you know, left out in the market for all the new signals that we are getting, especially, say, uh, AI. Yeah. Uh, I think staying focused on that and trying to, you know, address that or rather ride that tiger rather than, you know, uh, get scared away with that. I think that is what is going to help us uh, win. So no customer too small, no customer. no customer too big. We've got uh, solutions for all of them. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, every one of them is important. Yep. Well, we're just about wrapping up our time. Uh, it, I, 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 I'm like just so thrilled that we actually got to sit down and do this because Likewise, it's, I, I get to hear these stories quite a bit because I piece them together with different conversations over, you know, throughout the office or at dinner or whatever. But yeah, to, yeah. to put it, you know, on video format where we can actually share it with a lot of others that uh, I think people want to know this story. Uh, I want to want people to know who they're working with. Absolutely. So I think it's super valuable. Um, any last thoughts that you want to leave the audience? Is there anything else that you want to uh, touch base on today? Um, so our next set of growth is going to come working with partners. Right? Yeah. So we are here for the partners and we want to win with them. And that's a core belief now. Mm. And we want to make that happen. I love it. And you said the, the core, core values, core beliefs are yes. what's going to drive the company. So I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. And uh, you know, the partner ecosystem has, uh, has, has grown rapidly for us. Yes. And I, I think it's going to just go uh, you know, through the roof over I the next few years. I look forward to that yeah. so very much. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thanks it's been lot. great spending Pleasure. time with you Pleasure. today. Pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank Steve. you.